Am I wrong for refusing to sell my horse? Original post. Me 24 female and my boyfriend 26 have been dating for around 9 months. I've been riding horses since around 4 years old when I started taking lessons. When I was then I started helping out this girl at the stable with her horse lady. At 12 she told her she had to sell her due to time and interest and asked if me and my parents wanted to buy lady. Luckily for me, my parents were able to buy her and she's been mine ever since. She's my bestest friend and I love her a lot. When I started to date my boyfriend, I was very honest with the fact that my horse takes a lot of time and he was fine with this. When single, I could spend like 3 to 4 hours a day in the stable, but as we started dating I cut this down to about 3 hours every other day, as this is roughly how long it takes for me to do all the cleaning, preparing food, riding. Also, most of my friends are at the stable, which obviously means this is also social for me. The other days I would not ride and try to spend less time talking, which would make it about an hour. After about 6 months, he told me I spent too much time at the stable and I should prioritize my relationship more and somehow his family got involved in saying it was strange to prioritize her the way I did. I wasn't comfortable with this, but I am a bit of a pushover so I agreed. At first this meant cutting down time at the stable, but it has evolved into cutting down riding days. Now I ride about 2 days a week and the rest I'm simply there to do the basics. All of this as quickly as I can, because otherwise, I know he'll be annoyed and angry for days and give me the silent treatment. I know my horse isn't really suffering from not being ridden as often as before, but I still feel very guilty that I'm always rushing around her. Then last night he told me it was time to sell Lady. I laughed at him and asked if he was serious. He was. I told him no, and he said I needed to start prioritizing this relationship more, and I said I've done nothing but prioritize this relationship. We argued about it and he apparently thinks I can just put her down as she's old anyways. I was furious at this and told him that was absolutely not happening and I would never sell her. He said that any reasonable person would sell or put down their horse in favor of their boyfriend and the only reason I wouldn't is because I only hang out with other insane horse people. So I come to you reasonable people of Reddit, am I wrong? Now for the top advice before reading the update. Not wrong. Info, what has he sacrificed or compromised on for the relationship? Dump the loser. Sounds like the horse will support you more than the man. I've had a similar conversation with a mate. I'm happy to speak to your soon to be ex too. Pretty early on in the relationship, he decided to take a job in the town I work in. He lives in like 40 minutes away. I didn't ask him to do this, but this is what he brings up when I tell him I've tried to compromise. I took a new job for you, and so you should compromise more. That is manipulation. Run away, don't walk, and make sure you're safe. Holy not the idiot. Your boyfriend sounds controlling AF. You've worked hard to compromise with him, but he keeps moving the line until he eventually gets everything he wants, and you have sacrificed everything important to you. A lot of abusive partners start the cycle by trying to isolate their partner. You have a whole support network at the barn, and he wants you to give all that up in addition to your horse who is like a member of your family to you. This is super messed up, and a huge red flag. I know it really hurts, but be grateful he's shown you who he really is and how he doesn't prioritize or frankly care about your feelings and well-being. I'd run, not walk away from this guy. Don't forget he gives her the silent treatment and will be mad for days when she doesn't comply. Opus, you have a life, friends and hobbies you enjoy, and he doesn't like that. Cut and ride baby. Not wrong. Not wrong. Slowly escalating demands that you give up your hobbies and things you care about is a classic mistreatment tactic. Making you feel guilty about the way you spend your time, especially when you've always spent your time that way, is a classic mistreatment tactic. Trying to force you go get rid of people or animals you care about is a classic mistreatment tactic. I'm starting to sound like a broken record here, but best you get out while that's the only thing broken. These tactics are meant to break your spirit, your will, your confidence, and your self-worth. Those are all far too valuable to allow him to break them. Plus, most of her friends are at the stable. She's already cut down her socialization time with her other friends in order to spend more time with him, and now he wants to get rid of any reason for her to go to the stable at all. That's classic isolation. Not wrong, keep your horse. Your friends probably miss riding with you. Time for your boyfriend to compromise or get out. She should really get out. Especially since he then called her friends insane horse people. That's just disrespectful and definitely trying to isolate. Edit, so I never expected this to get as much attention as it did. I'm very overwhelmed and thankful for all your kind comments and messages. I am currently sitting with Lady in her stable, crying my eyes out because this has been such a wake-up call for me. 
My boyfriend left to visit his family and friends in his old town earlier today before I posted, so for everyone worried, all is well for now and I will handle this as soon as possible. First, I need to go home and sleep. Thank you all for being wonderful. Now for the first update. First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone who commented and sent me messages. I never thought my post would get as much attention as it did. It was very overwhelming. But again, thank you for your kindness and support. Also, thank you to the people who sent pictures of their horses. All of them are very cute. Anyway, you guys were right. I don't know why I didn't see it myself, but this behavior of isolating me has been going on for a while. He would say it was strange how much time I spent with my family, that adults didn't spend that much time with their family. When I pointed out he also spent a lot of time with his family, I was imagining and exaggerating things. There was so much going on, and for some reason I didn't realize it. He would make me feel guilty all the time. For the smallest things. Me and boyfriend didn't live together officially, because I thought it was too early. But since he had taken a job in the town where I live for me, he convinced me that him staying here during the weeks was a good idea. I feel incredibly stupid for not standing up for myself. I am a bit of a pushover, and I guess he realized that if he made me feel guilty, I would eventually give in. And I did. Just so many instances of him pushing my boundaries. Now the update, I called my brother on Saturday morning, and he came and helped me pack up everything my boyfriend left in my apartment. Then I texted my boyfriend to break up with him. Maybe I should have done it in person but honestly, I don't want to see him again. He called a bunch before I answered. He was confused. At first, he tried to ask me what was wrong, what had happened. He got angry when I told him, saying he can't believe I was breaking up with him over a minor disagreement, and when I said him wanting me to off my horses in a minor disagreement, he said I must be misremembering. I eventually hung up, texted him that his things were packed, and free to pick up on the first floor of my building anytime. Then I blocked him. Haven't heard from him since. I was able to change my locks yesterday Monday thankfully. Through mutual friends, I got in touch with his ex-girlfriend and we chatted on Instagram. I don't really want to say everything that she told me as it's not my story to tell, but I will say I'm very happy I got out right now this early. Since Friday when I posted, I've spent pretty much all day every day with Lady, my friends and family. I haven't been this happy in months, can't believe it took Reddit to get me here lol. For all those worried about Lady's safety, I too am a little worried, but it's eased by the fact that he never went to the stable with me, so I'm pretty sure he doesn't know where it is. And B while I live in a country with a lot stricter gun laws than the US, the old man who owns the stable is a hunter and has assured me, with a lil wink, he will keep an eye out for any strangers lurking around. So that's all. I am safe and so is Lady. Both of us are a lot happier than we were four days ago, and a lot of it is thanks to all of you. So again, thanks so much for all the kindness. I'm so glad to read this. Make sure you remember this experience for next relationship too as people have a tendency to miss the red flag behaviors and also pick the same types of people over and over again. Be safe. I definitely will. Thank you. Just wanted to reply and say you definitely made the right decision. My ex of 7 years was pushing me to put my healthy but unrideable 11 year old thoroughbred down for over a year before he broke up with me. I was even stupidly considering it. I wish I'd seen the signs of how unhealthy and controlling that relationship and his family had become. I was severely depressed for months before the breakup and never even saw why or saw it coming. I'm in an infinitely better relationship now with a man who pushes me to be at the barn more and give the best life to my horses and my now 13-year-old thoroughbred is healthier and happier than he's ever been too. Best of luck and love to you and lady. Oh I'm so happy to hear you're in a better situation now. Hopefully a future boyfriend will be supportive. Thank you for your comment. Yay. Girl I'm so proud of you for being strong and having such a great family. As someone in a relationship with an abuse survivor, in a similar isolating pattern, I'm so happy you got out now, because it only gets worse from there. And it says so much your brother was so ride or die, even after isolating from him, he came and helped you right away. Sadly, my horse passed away many years ago, but I still dream about him. Lady is so important, and so much more than just a pet. She's a hobby and a passion too, and you deserve someone who sees and understands that. To many more years together. Second update. I posted on Reddit almost a year ago seeking help and advice on a bizarre situation that happened in my relationship. At the time I was in a somewhat harmful relationship, or at least the beginning of it. I read my post back a while ago and realized how much I sugar-coated things at the time. Part of me was still in denial I think. I didn't describe any of the aggressive outburst. The yelling, throwing things, pushing, grabbing. He never hit me, it never got that far, but in hindsight, I think that's where things were heading. 
Still, people on here saw red flags and told me to get away. I guess thousands of people telling you something is very effective and I broke up with him that day. I never told my family that Reddit was the reasons I left that day. I still feel bad that their concerns and warnings weren't enough to make me leave before it was too late, but random internet strangers were. I've only told my therapist. Sorry that you're not getting more credit in real life folks. This week, I found out that my ex-boyfriend has been arrested for unliving his girlfriend. News travels fast between small towns. I knew he had a new girlfriend, they met fairly quickly after I dumped him. I didn't know her or who she was, just heard it from other people. I looked up her Instagram when I found out he was arrested. She seems nice, from what little I can make out from pictures and captions. I feel guilty that I didn't track her down when they met and warned her, but when I found out he had another girlfriend, all I could think was, thank God, then he will forget about me. Does that make me an awful person? Maybe, I don't know. And I could never imagine he would do something like this. Even now it doesn't feel real. Yes, he had anger management issues, but murder. It's just difficult to comprehend. I'm rambling, sorry. It's been a crazy few days, but I feel really grateful to the people on here. Because that could have been me if I had stayed with him, if people hadn't shaken me awake. So thank you Reddit people. Also, screw you Adam. Hope you rot in hell. I remember you, and I'm so glad you got out when you did, before things got worse. Remember not to let survivor's guilt get to you. What he did is on him. OMG, I was one of those strangers telling you to get out. I remember your update and being happy that you got out, and your horse was okay and protected by your friend in case he tried something. If you had tried to warn her, it would have gone one of several ways. 1. She believed you and got out. Then he would be angry at you and redirect his anger back at you. 2. She didn't believe you, and he would have painted you as the jealous ex trying to get back with him. And she would have had the same unfortunate fate. As the top comment said, do not let survivor's guilt affect you there wasn't anything you could have done. I remember that post. Anyone who suggests ending a beloved pet for their convenience is someone I would run, not walk away from. I'm glad OP is safe, and she and Lady escaped this man. Yeah, and she said he never even went to the stable. Like this horse is obviously a very important part of her life, and he's never even bothered to meet her. I feel like that's a red flag even before it got to the part of the boyfriend wanting to off the pet. Last story. My brother unknowingly saved my life 10 years ago. Today I finally told him. Me and my little brother always had a very strong bond. We never actually argued or been mean to each other. We always covered each other's back and overall been very affectionate towards each other. We come from complicated background, with chaotic family relationships and performance-oriented parents. I moved out as soon as possible, now happily married to an awesome man, far away from my previous home. My little brother is struggling under pressure my parents are putting on him, forcing him to be a man, having good grades and excel in sports, and even though he is now legally adult, he's still living with them. He is facing great opportunities, being chosen for next national football team, but is exhausted both mentally and physically, and overall under a lot of pressure, especially from the side of our father. For last year, he is constantly stressed and has severe insomnia. We are in contact almost every day, and I am trying to help him, offered him to move with us multiple times, but he is too afraid of our father to do it. Today I could not sleep, because my husband is snoring heavily during this time of a year, so I was just browsing internet, when my brother messaged me, asking for help. He said that I am the only person he can talk about it, and that he is thinking of some bad things, and does not know what to do. He was in very bad state of mind, basically falling apart. I immediately told him to come see us and stay for a while and said that we can resolve it together. I was so afraid, but also very happy he reached to me and asked for help. He is gentle giant type of guy, being forced to ignore his own needs to perform good enough in the eyes of our parents, with no tolerance for mental health issues. He had several injuries related to sport, some quite severe, problems in school, there is a possibility he would need to repeat whole year and will not be able to make it to final exams. We have been talking for whole night. He said I am his most beloved person and thanked me for being with him. I told him that it is nothing to thank for because he is my little cupcake and I love him no matter what. And then I told him what happened 10 years ago. I was 16 and he was 9. I was not well, battling with undiagnosed mental illness, bullying, and eating disorder. I felt alone, with no support and basically in the same situation as him, but not as strong as him to ask for help. One evening after argument with my father, I decided to end things. I went to my room, sat next to my bed and prepared myself for the next step. Then I heard my brother knocking on door. He asked if I want to play our Pokemon game. We basically pretended to be Pokemon trainers, catching imaginary Pokemons and having fun. 
I sat there in silence for a while, with a razor in my hand. Then he asked again. I put razor back and unlocked the door. I was crying, and he was confused because I was smiling the same time. He told me that he will let me choose my Pokemon first to cheer me up. I hugged him and cried like an idiot, then we played together. Today I told him that he saved my life, even though he did not know about it back then. And we both cried. After this, we agreed on getting him immediate medical and psychological help, not telling anyone except my husband, who is incredibly kind and supportive. Then we will arrange things so he can stay with us for a while. Sorry for being sentimental, I just needed to tell anyone that there is no weakness in asking for help. It is very brave. I think that sometimes, one just needs to play Pokemon games. It can change so many things. My brother did the same for me when we were 15 and 8. I was in the bathroom about to do the unthinkable, and he knocked on the door. He asked can you make us some meatball soup when you're done. And it hit me in that second, if I am not around, nobody will take care of him. The most important person in my life would have nobody on his side. Our parents were an art useless, and he can't fend for himself. I got his name tattooed on my arm last Friday, so that whenever I'm feeling like I need to end things, I have the reminder of why I live. Despite him being 17 now and as close to adulthood, we still need each other. My older brother left his 7-year awful relationship and came back in my sister's and I's lives, having to come back home with our parents. My sister was also going through a horrible relationship as the three of us were all raised with very minimal emotional and mental support from parents who believed that you have house, food and water, what else do you need? One day my brother came home early from work and found my sister sitting alone at the table with a bottle of pills ready to end herself and basically thinking about it alone at the dining table. My brother found her before she did it and she just sobbed in his arms and that became the catalyst to leaving her crappy ex. My brother, sister and I have matching triquetra tattoos as a result of that happening because if it weren't for my brother, we wouldn't have each other and it was the best way to ensure that no matter what happens with our lives, we'll still be thinking about each other and ready to help when needed, especially for my sister who I love dearly and would have absolutely lost my mind if I lost her to some loser ex.